Treating your fish can be difficult, especially when you're new or when you run into something you don't understand. And so I'm going to break down the ways in which we convey at the store or through email how to treat fish. Now, there's multiple phases here. One would be, do you have a quarantine tank or don't you? So we'll start there. A quarantine tank would be you've bought some fish, whether you shipped them in from the internet or you went to a store, a pet store, and you bought them and you're bringing them home. And before you introduce them to, let's say, your main aquarium, you would want to quarantine them somewhere else to see if they're bringing in any new diseases or uh, parasites. So we highly recommend a quarantine tank. It could be kind of bare bottom, bare bones setup. Maybe it's your old tank. Kind of have it up and going because it makes medicating a lot easier. So you can imagine in my situation, treating 800 gallons of water with meds is very costly. Treating 20 gallons in a 20 gallon aquarium with meds, a lot cheaper and less work. So that's couple of the benefits there is one, we don't spread contamination and two, usually it saves us money. So that's a good thing. Initial investment, if it's your, you have to buy a second aquarium, a 10 gallon works really nice because almost every medicine uh, has recommendations for dosing for 10 gallons. So that's a nice thing. Most people don't keep a quarantine aquarium, even though we recommend it. So there we're going to need to treat the entire aquarium and we need to use uh, meds to treat a variety of things because you can have a host, uh, a fish that is seemingly doing okay, but its immune system is very strong and it's carrying something like ick or a bacterial infection just a little bit. And then it comes into your aquarium and sometimes it's stressful. So then it succumbs to that disease or maybe it's a bully fish and it's bullying another fish and that fish's immune system is now compromised and therefore the bacteria or the ick finds opportunity in the weakened fish and attacks that one. Kind of like if we've had chicken pox, if, like I've had chicken pox in my life, but if I was to carry it now and you had never had chicken pox, I can spread it to you even though I wasn't presenting symptoms and that kind of stuff. So that's how we can spread these diseases from seemingly healthy fish to other fish. Not to mention all the internal things like tapeworms and stuff we can't see with the naked eye. So where I like to start is, one, can you identify what's wrong? Most, I would say 50% of the time, maybe even most times, your new aquarist, you can't. You just know there's something wrong with these fish. I've run it into it in my aquarium before. You're not quite sure, you have to do some investigative work. And so that's where something like what we sell, the Quarantine Trio, which is these three products right here. We saw on our website, we use them on every fish that we come in contact with. This one treats ick and fungal infections, uh, which this is ick X. And then we have Paracleanse. This does internal tapeworms and some external parasites. And then we have Maricin, which is an antibiotic that would treat fin rod and Popeye and maybe uh, bloating issues and stuff like that. So between these three, we can treat the three main areas. And those three main areas are bacterial, external parasites, and internal parasites. So bacterial, parasites, and fungal. Those are like the three main things we can identify and treat for. Now there's lots of other things that kind of go in between and all of that, but that's a much more complicated video and would be broken down specifically by each disease. In this scenario, you don't have a quarantine tank, or you do, right? One of those two. We still recommend using these three meds in conjunction. And why would we recommend all three meds? Well, a lot of times if you had a fungal infection, when you cure the fungus, you have an open wound and therefore you'll have a bacterial infection. So you can see how, oh, I see, treat the fungus, also need to treat the uh, bacteria that's gonna be left behind. And when we have immune compromised fish, most times they can have more than one thing. So it's very common for maybe you get a new fish and it gets ick and therefore uh, we're treating the ick, but it also has internal worms. That's not gonna kill it till six months down the road. So most fish, do have internal parasites from coming from a wholesaler into a store scenario. Maybe you got them from a local breeder and you can avoid that. But in general, we believe start clean. So you start cleaning out your fish from worms, you get any external parasites and you get any bacterial infections. And all of this could happen in transit. So you can have the best breeder in the world breeding fish and their fish are great. You see them in person and then you ship them home to you. Well, in that shipment, they can actually get bacterial infections and, and pH burn and things like that going on. And that would be why we might use meds even when the fish looked great. How do we recommend doing it? There's two camps. Now I know I keep, we keep splitting this up into one camp, one camp, one camp, one camp, but there's so many ways to do this. 
Our first recommendation is use the meds we recommend because they're fish safe, snail safe, shrimp safe, and plant safe. All of the meds we're recommending here are that. So that's really nice. There's other meds that work, but not all of them are safe for all of those things. The two camps are treat all of them at once, all three meds, right? That's what we do. We use the quarantine trio on everything at once. There's another camp that would be uh, a routine, and that routine might be, well, what's the most likely culprit first? Usually that would be bacterial. So a fish gets shipped or something like that. So fish incoming, bacterial infections are the most common. So we would treat with Maricin for a week, all right? Then the second week, the most common thing is ick, so we, or external parasites. We would use ickx. And then the third or the least, it's not, it's actually the most common, but the least uh, the slowest killing thing would be internal tapeworms and gill flukes and things like that. And that's where we would use Paracleanse. You can treat it all at once. The good news is we've done the testing and all those meds work together at once. So you can have them all in the water at the same time and do it all. You can also uh, spread them out over time. And that sometimes for a more sensitive species, we use this on everything. But if you had a very weakened fish, right, it was... Um, prolonged neglect and that kind of stuff. You might want to spread it out and take it easy on that fish as opposed to here's all of the fix right now. And yes, my goldfish just got fed. That's what you heard behind me. All right, so we've got uh, that way to do it. So basically all three at once or space them out. And when you have an active infection, what I mean by active infection is you look and you visually see the fins are rotting away or I can see it has ick on it or it's got this fungus patch right behind its eye. That would be considered an active infection. When we have an active infection, the recommendation is always treat that first. So in the case of fungus, we would use the Mardell uh, Marison and the Ickex. The Ickex, even though it's meant for ick, the chemicals that are in it also work really good against fungal. Also, the active ingredient here, erythromycin, also works against funguses. So them together works really well at treating that. Um, if it was ick, we, we recommend just following the directions on ickx. It's, it's served us very well for 10 plus years and worked with all the chlorinators and that kind of stuff, we've had uh, great results. Not that every product will treat everything every time. We're purely going, this treats 99% of all cases we've ever run into. Yes, there's 1%, you might have to, you may have that case, but it's unlikely. So we have the active infection first. If there's something active that you can see and identify, follow the directions on the bottle or the package to the T, get that knocked out. Then follow up with, uh, what you didn't do. So maybe you do need to still deworm them. Maybe they still need to follow up and make sure there's no bacteria uh, lingering on, that kind of stuff. If you're doing the quarantine trio and you don't see any active infection. So this is preventative instead of reacting to an actual disease. We're now going to preventative mode, which I recommend for everyone. That would be dosing all three products, right? And this is, we made this video a few times now over the years. This is where people get hung up in our way we do this. So when we dose all three at a time as a preventative treatment, we do not follow the directions on the package, right? So what we do is we establish we're going to treat them for one week, right? So seven days. We're going to put one dose worth of each medication in the first day. So if you have a 20 gallon aquarium and you need to put in Paracleanse, you need to put in Maricin, and you need to put in Ickex, it's not just one dose of one of these. Nope, it's all, all three of them are going in, but we're treating for 20 gallons one time. And so with these, like these, um, these meds in the packets, real simple, we're going to use, right, two of these, one, two, goes in at the beginning, we use two of the other one, and then we use, I believe it's 10 milliliters. Uh, I'll, I'll wanna fact check that real quick here. Five milliliters, she's 10 gallons. Yep, I've memorized it. You'd wanna use 10 milliliters for the 20 gallons. So that would be a total of three different meds going in with one initial dose. Now, all of these meds will say to follow up with water changes and things like that, that we actually don't follow up with. We let all of that marinate for seven days. 
And a lot of you would ask, well, aren't you going to kill bacteria with an antibiotic? No, not necessarily. Uh, we found that the strains that we keep in our aquariums don't react adversely to that. Uh, also, we recommend not really feeding a lot during this quarantine period. So maybe uh, you get the fish, you put meds in day one, day three or four, feed them once lightly, and then don't feed them again until day seven when you're changing 30% of the water. Go ahead and give them a feeding there. And that's because if they are passing internal uh, tapeworms and parasites, it can be hard for them to move, they can get an upset stomach, and, and we don't want rotten food. We don't want to add ammonia and make problems worse. And so we focus on a one-week treatment, all three meds in on day one, one dose worth, and we just let that sit. Now, any of the directions you read are going to say dose, change water, dose, change water, dose, change water. That would be for an active infection, and that is the best way to do it actively. That being said, we can do it reactively or passively here of letting it soak. Meds do degrade over time, but not nearly as fast as the, uh, the companies would want you to believe. If you use a lot of meds, we make a lot of money, they make a lot of money, and here we are trying to help the industry as a whole and get rid of diseases in the home aquarium as cheaply and as effectively as we can. And this is the way we found to do that, is this quarantine trio will handle 90% of anything you're ever going to run into, which makes it really nice. Have this on hand before you witness a problem. And typically when you're going to get problems, it's bringing new fish in or an extended period of time where maybe maintenance got lapsed or a fish is getting bullied. They can come out of nowhere. And so we believe that ick is always present. We believe that bacteria problems are always present. They're always there. They're just waiting for an opportune time to strike. And that happens in our aquarium. So having the meds, you know, being quick with meds is one of the, the best medicines, if you will. Instead of waiting four days for it to arrive in the mail or hunting around different fish stores trying to find it, or the most common one that we run into is, well, I couldn't find Ickex, or I couldn't find, you know, one, one big one is, I couldn't find Marison, so I bought Marison too. Completely different product. And so we wanna use the right meds on day one not try something else and then on day five go, well, now I'm going to order what I need. Now, if you have your own meds that you love to use, great. This video is not for you. This is for the people that are looking. I don't know what to do. What do, what do they do? They're touching you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of fish every week. This is what we rely on to get our fish healthy. Regardless of the method you're using, active treating infection or quarantining and the one week method. There are things that are missing from the packages, right? And so, like when we go to Paracleanse here, it is, uh, you know, add one packet per 10 gallons to be treated, and then do that again on day three, and then day five, change water. The problem with this is, if you're treating like internal tapeworms, which this product is great for, you need to follow up, and it doesn't say that. So what does that mean? That means you treat, for a week long, great, they, they uh, you know, passed a lot of those tapeworms and parasites, it's gonna look weird, their poop is. And then two or three weeks later, you need to treat again because this med can only actively kill tapeworms. Tapeworms lay eggs. The eggs, by the way they're formed, the medicine can't get into them and kill them. And so we need to wait for them to hatch out and then we can kill those off. So we have to break the cycle. So the first thing we did was we dewormed them, we broke the cycle, killed all the adult worms in the fish. But they laid eggs before that. Then we have to let those eggs hatch out. Then they become adults. We can kill those off before they lay more eggs. So we need that follow-up treatment. Uh, and that's what we recommend for both active infections. If you had a fish that was really skinny, we'd want to do that and we identify that or as a quarantine. And so like from our store, we quarantine everything. We use these meds on everything. People always ask, well, should I still quarantine? And the answer is yes, because at the soonest, you're buying fish a week later from us, and then you could dose them again. But the reality is you should be taking an active role in your fish's health and going, okay, well, if they quarantine them, maybe I didn't buy them right away. They've been two weeks. I'll wait two weeks, and now I will deworm them again. And you could, you know, we recommend the full treatment just because um, sometimes they're switching pHs and there's all these things that can change and you can have fish fights and all of that. And so we recommend just running it through a quarantine tank and quarantining them all, make sure they're healthy and they're enjoying your water before you add them to your display tank. And that's the best method we found. 
And the reason why we settled on these products is because we've tested lots of things. We wanted it to be fail safe for myself, my employees, and we wanted it to be fast. So, you know, if it takes six weeks to treat all of our fish, we'd never get to sell anything. So stores are in two camps. Either they don't treat at all and we have lots of fish or they're forced to treat for so long they can't make any money and therefore they're not bringing those fish in. And we had to develop this and it took us many, you know, many, many years really. And we consulted with different um, ichthyologists and things like that to build this. We found the building blocks here and there of what we wanted. And over time it did evolve. And so this used to be at the very, very, very beginning of this. It was we just treated live bearers with uh, maricin or basically erythromycin, an antibiotic, because they always had fin issues. Guppies did and swordtails did. And then from there we noticed that, well, cardinal tetras kind of have fin issues also, but then they, they're really sensitive. They get ick all the time. And so we found that we would treat them for the fin rot and then, oh no, the next day they'd have ick, right? So then we put the ick X in and we go, wow, those can both work together. And that was the first unity was basically these two together worked really well. And then we decided, well, we want to we want to get that last step, the last step that the customer doesn't even know that's happening. And that is internal tapeworms. Fish that stay in our care for a long time, they're losing weight. What do we do about this? And customers, they're losing fish also, which is beneficial to the store, but not beneficial to the hobby in general. And then we wanted to deworm fish. So then we started trying and we found that um, basically General Cure, which was the first one we tried. Well, it was actually Prozzi Pro. Prozzi Pro was the first one we tried. And it evolved and now it is Paracleanse, but they have the same active ingredients. And so that's what I want to touch on last here, is if you've been watching us for many years and following what we do, most two out of three products have now changed. Now we've just changed the packaging really. So we still use Ikex and Ikex is great. And maybe someday it'll change to something else. Like they stop making it or we find a better thing. I don't know. Right. But Ikex has always been tried and true steady. These two we've changed. Why do we change from general cure to paracleanse and from erythromycin to maricin? Well, first, Maricin, the only active ingredient in it is erythromycin. So it's the same thing, but they're calling it something else. The reason why we chose to do that is because if we call it Maricin, it's cheaper. Like Fritz or Mardell, I guess. Yeah, Fritz Mardell. Fritz owns Mardell. Uh, sells it cheaper to you guys than API does. So we switched that. And so in our trio, our trio has always been the same price pretty much. But now you get to treat 200 gallons worth of water with fin or with uh, antibiotics. Instead, it used to only be 10 or I mean 100 gallons, so 10 packets. So you're getting twice as much for the same amount of money. We then did the same thing with Paracleanse. When Paracleanse came out, uh, it's got the same active ingredients as General Cure did, and that is metronidazole and praziquantinol. Both those are the same, same ratios and everything. We tested it for six months, worked the exact same for us, but now you get uh, 20, is this a 24 pack? Yeah, this is a 24 pack, so my bad. The antibiotic is actually 240 gallons worth, even better than 10, right? This is a 20 pack, so you get to treat twice as much. And so what we were able to switch brand basically from popular brand that was there to now new brand, and you guys get to treat twice as much on this. And so the last thing I'll, you know, I've said the last thing a couple times now, but I wanna cover it all. This will treat 940 gallons total. That doesn't mean it'll treat an 800 gallon tank for a week. It means that 800 gallons will use up most of this bottle. So if I get ick in there, I basically got to use almost an entire bottle of this. And same thing, if you follow the directions on some of these packages, if we're dosing on day one and day three for deworming and we have a 55 gallon tank and we use six packets, let's say, let's say we go a little bit heavier, that's six packets, three days later, six more packets, right? So we're up to 12 packets already. Then if we repeat that, let's say in three weeks or four weeks, that's another 12 packet. So we'll actually need more than this, but that's how it works. So when we say it treats 200 gallons, 200 gallons total, not for an extended amount of treatment or anything like that, it is the total. So if you have a 10 gallon tank, and you're gonna treat it three times, that's 30 gallons total. Here you can get through one treatment of each. Let's say you had, uh, you wanna do the quarantine method that we do and this Together, we'll treat 200 gallons. Now you'll have some extra antibiotic and you'll have some extra ICX left over. And hopefully in the future, we're gonna make it so you can custom 
uh, add and take away from our packages to make it a little bit better because some people have very small aquariums, some people have 800 gallon aquariums, and they need different size of meds and we unfortunately don't have a one size fits all, but we're working on that. As we evolve, we keep trying to give you guys value without raising the price. So far we've been doing pretty good and that's our method. You know, quarantine tanks best. If you don't have that, we're gonna treat the aquarium and we wanna focus on active infections first. If we don't have that, we can't figure out what it is. Let's do the broad spectrum, treat everything. And then after that, there's a few outlying diseases that we can research in the future. So this has served my company very well and a lot, you know, tens of thousands of hobbyists at this point. We just need an updated video with the new medicines and uh, bring it to more people because not everyone goes back four years and watches a video about medications. Not very fun. But look at the description and the comment down below. We'll have more resources for you. Sign up for our newsletter. We put out blog articles like this all the time. So if you don't learn by watching video and you learn by reading, great. We got a blog that is going to make you the smartest person around.